opinions from all sides of the issues concerning local, state, and national topics of importance to the Jonesboro community. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council, or our underwriters, donors, or sponsors. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for turning into our uh, show <laughs> on the thoughts of our, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of nervous this morning. It's the first time me really hosting. Um, thank you again for tuning into our show, Our Thoughts on the Matter on KLEK 102.5. Um, my name is Amanda Dunavant. I am joined by Miss Allie J. Hi, everyone. And Brad Dahl. Hello. Um, we got a couple of interesting things going on today. Um, we got a few talk topics that we're going to discuss. One of them is going to be um, new rules for the state of Arkansas laws. Um, one of them is going to be text messaging is now, instead of a warning, it's a $250 fine. And um, let's, yeah, a that's a lot of money. No more warnings. That's including Facebook and all social media. As of right now, you can still call somebody, but... They best not catch you on social media or texting. Um, what's y'all's thoughts on this? I think it's a good idea, quite honestly, because that's, I feel like it's going to prevent a lot of accidents. Right, right. Yeah, and, you know, this is something that um, obviously has been on the forefront for quite a while. Um, you're seeing it really happen across the country. Lots of states are doing this. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it's um, with the growing world of social media and everything at your fingertips, it it only makes sense. I mean, really and truly, if you want to think about this, this is common sense, but we're having to put fines on common sense. Because people, no offense to anybody out there, we do stupid things. Yes, we do. <laughs> and we know that we shouldn't be juggling multitasking things while driving because it can end horribly but we're always the ones to think no nah, it won't happen to me i got this so yeah i think this is a good idea to help prevent that we got this oh of course you know and, and you know here in jonesboro we're a town of on the books 72,000 people but if you ever just uh kind of just take a few minutes on uh social media some days while you're sitting at home not driving um <laughs> you just look through and there are so many comments about hashtag horrible Jonesboro traffic. You know, there are always complaints about traffic in Jonesboro, and it's it, it is it is busy quite a lot. And it is. in the middle of that, you will look over, and somebody is definitely not focused on what's going on, and I, accidents happen. Yeah, I know. On Monday, when the law first broke, I was in my car. I was driving from work, and it seemed like everywhere I looked there was someone on the phone and I'm like really I don't even think there's this many people on the phone on a normal day and you guys chose the first day this is a law it, it, exactly to make this happen. exactly you know you could probably go back and look at accident reports in the last handful of years and there would probably be a very large percentage of ones caused by not paying attention you know you got your hands on the wheel but you got your other hand on whatever device social and looking social media doing whatever you're doing mm. and in the blink of an eye, things can happen. And somebody could get seriously injured, you could take someone's life. And like again, it's, it's, it's kind of sad that we have to go the route of having to find people for something that should be common sense. But we all do it, I do it, and gotta pay attention. Yeah. I will have my phone on while I'm driving, so I'll know if somebody calls or messages me, but I don't answer it, I promise you. I will be right there with my hands on the steering wheel, I'm like, nope. Mm -hmm. Nope, I'll call you back. It's not that serious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, or if I know, like, somebody's supposed to be giving me directions somewhere and I don't know where I'm going, I'll pull over and then I'll call them back. But I just, right. I'm it, paranoid about things like that anyway. Yeah, it, and, and sadly, some people just don't, um, just don't think about it. And, you know, if you, you, you can look everywhere. You could probably, in the seat you're sitting in right now, look around and you'll probably see some sign, some sign of warning on some device and sadly those warnings are there because someone has you know hurt themselves yeah. and that's kind of the world we're living in these days it's a shame yeah it is it is so um 
As I mentioned, was it two hundred and fifty dollars for the fine? It's two hundred and fifty dollars. Two hundred and fifty dollars. I I was reading it the other day. Of course, this goes back to social medias, texting, and while driving, everything like that. I think they omitted GPS from it as yes. of right now. As of right now. Um, I hope they never take that off. I'm horrible with directions, and I have that <laughs> GPS right there. Yeah, you know, I, I would say if if you do use your devices that are not built into your car for GPS, invest in five or six dollar little mount. You know, uh -huh. put it there. I mean, it, it's going to be well worth it. You know, um, that way you can at least look at it, but your hands are not off the wheel. See me personally, I have the sound turned up so I can hear, and I don't have to look there. Right, right. You know, there, there's a there's so many interesting cheap little gadgets these days that can actually integrate you know phones with your radio in your car so yeah. you can you actually have it playing through there but uh anybody out there have any comments on this i mean has anybody been affected by this right now I mean, would anybody like to chime in that they have been pulled over if you'd like to chime in we do have a youtube live stream we have a facebook live uh you can go to our page kelly k FEM and you can leave a message and comments or you can actually give us a call at 187-1870-277-1080 and um, we'll be more than glad to oh, talk to you. I, I would like to uh, put the question out there though if, if there's anybody in the law enforcement community listening if after a certain period of time, if there's any statistics that come out of seeing potentially lowering accident rates and things like that, I would love to hear how this has made a positive benefit to right. the community. I think that'd be awesome knowledge to know as a community for a whole to see together that we're working together as a whole to make our life better mm -hmm. and safer for not just for us but our children too because most of these people I don't know uh, I know me I've got three kids and I'm constantly in Jonesboro traffic and it scares me to death my kids in the car just people driving whipping around texting on their phone i see it all the time oddly enough i've actually seen people on motorcycles texting, texting and driving and, and, and I'm, yes of all things to do you're on two How wheels and in the world? oh yeah yeah we i had a good friend back in college yeah he would do it too he would he would text and this is back before the big screens where you actually had a full keyboard mm -hmm. you know I, I would actually see people texting and driving on a motorcycle i couldn't and... even imagine how that would work now now just so you know how a motorcycle works once yeah. you get going you're more balanced but still you're taking you're you're on two wheels yeah. that's you know i ride and i i'm never i'm never no no mm -hmm. no I, I i've got some nerve but i ain't got that much nerve <laughs> yeah and, and if i'm not mistaken isn't there a an age bracket on this too i think it's at 19 or 21 and under they cannot use their phone at all isn't that also a part of this new law that's a good question i, I do I believe it, it is i believe uh, adolescents and uh, under a certain age they are not allowed to use anything other than hands-free only i believe that is what it is i'm gonna look it up uh, that is that's good you guys don't mind i got a little something here on our okay. live stream we have a comment yes it's from Leganti Kale, also known as Kato Wonder. First of all, he would just like to say good morning from Las Vegas. Morning. Happen to say we are all jealous, but enjoy your trip. Amen. <laughs> still enjoy it. Still enjoy it. Um, he said one thing is possible. Watch for is car radios are starting to have apps built into them, so eventually this law apply in the case. Yeah, I, I think what he's trying to say is that you know car car manufacturers are building in integrated directly into the cars uh, technology. Of course, you know we everybody's got a lot of screens in the cars now with, of course, hands free, you know, Bluetooth speakers, everything like that. But there are also ones that will read your text messages and everything for you as well. But there are options nowadays to keep you more focused on driving versus the devices. And if, if you're worried about, am I going to be a person that gets pulled over and fined for this, go invest 5, 10, 15, 20 bucks and try to get yourself some options. The new law is called Paul's Law. And we have Brother Kyle that just showed up with us today. Welcome. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Everybody, we've been talking about this in my shop all week. What are you hearing in the shop? They don't like it. And, and, and why not? Why not? They don't like it because they say it's unfair. How is it unfair? Okay, which one are you talking about? The the texting and driving. 
Oh, they they good with that. Oh, they're okay. They, they're they, good they, with that. Everybody's good with texting they, and driving. They, they good with that. Nobody needs to be doing that. Everybody agree with that one. But sometimes I am not going to lie. But I can go down the road. I can text and drive real good. But since that law <laughs> came out, I, I'm not going to do it. Good. I'm, I'm going. I can, I'm going to Atlanta, Texas, all the way there. All the way there. 300, 400, 300 miles, 70 miles an hour, Texas. How are you going to end up getting $250 oh, no, it's, it's, per mile? It's, it's, it's over. It's over. Good. It's over. My R- son and they R- all R- complain. R.I.P. to texting and driving. But, so, it's wrong. Now, it sounds like you had a different it. topic on your mind. Oh, I had a, two, two or three different topics on my mind. Well, what, can, what do you well, want? Well, does anybody well, have anything else to say on this topic before uh, we transition? Before we move right. on, I just want to say, Quabila said that she would like to see everyone enable the app that disables your phone while driving oh that's a very good thing um and bt groove as usual says it can wait yeah that's right and and as uh quibilla was saying there are actually built in i know to my phone i have a samsung phone that you can actually enable an app that will not allow you to do any form of texting while you are going over a certain speed so if if you're one of those people that you just don't think that you can wait that is absolutely an awesome feature and so that's a good okay. point to bring up okay now you're getting into a another area all these different apps and all these different things that can block texting the school gonna come up with something oh yeah of course school churches and next thing you know texting gonna be obsolete because you can't text anywhere you know in hawaii they pass a law you cannot text in a crosswalk wouldn't be such a bad thing. <laughs> well, you can't do that in New York, though. Well, that's true. Because they say you, you are, you, your mind is not on what you're doing it's while not. you're texting. Oh, no, of that's course. Not, human beings, we think that we are so good at multitasking. We are horrible multitaskers, which is why things happen like people will try to walk across the street and end up getting hit because they were on their phone and the person that was driving was on their phone and nobody saw anything. <laughs> and, right? and believe it or not, even... <laughs> topics like this right here there are actually studies on posture of how looking at your phone down at your phone all day long affects posture it's 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 actually very wild that we have that effect on the body and how we react because we can't get our hands out of a cell phone interesting Mm -hmm. true you can also turn on um instead of getting all these fancy apps and stuff you can always turn it on airplane mode and it kills the whole entire thing oh really yes i didn't know that yes it does also complete side note because you know ali j has random facts for days if you put your phone on airplane mode when you're charging it it'll make it charge faster faster. that's so much so much faster just throwing that out there now I have to say I'm pretty See, curious I'm not, about what I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not I'm not electronic savvy, so y'all tell me all this stuff is I'm, new to me. I'm pretty curious I'm, what Brother Cobb had on his mind when he came in. What yeah, topic what, do you have on your mind? What is everybody in your shop so angry about? Okay, y'all through? Oh yeah, we're yeah, good. Yeah, we're good. All we're you. waiting for you. They open they they are on this uh, open container law that was just passed. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. And I agree with it because I don't drink. Right. So it don't bother me. But a lot of people can't understand why no one else in the car can have an open container if stopped. And who would get the ticket? Would the driver get the ticket or would the person with the open container? And then there are, you cannot even have a mobile home going down the road. Like and people, an RV? An RV. Okay. And people in the back drinking. You cannot. They say alcohol cannot be found in your console, in your trunk in your glove compartment nowhere in the car can there be an open container okay and they are upset with that one complete i know who would have an open container of alcohol in their glove compartment that's what that's what i'm saying who got that and so really <laughs> and then the, what, what what do they give you if the police suspect you drinking or some drinking is going on and they can search your trunk they can search your glove compartment they can search your console in other words they can search your car without having a search and seizure warrant well it's i think it's at that point it it falls under probable cause yes but yeah i i I can see pros and cons of it um like we were discussing earlier before we came on the air i didn't even know i thought that was just a law you know i understood it to be a law already i didn't know that it wasn't 
as Brad said, it just seems like common sense. Yeah. Right? I mean, I, mean, yeah. not, I mean, what I'm saying, if I'm in a mobile home, I don't drink true enough. But if I'm going down the road in the recreational vehicle and people back there in the back playing cards, drinking, listening to music, just sitting back chilling, as we said, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. why we can't do that? Yeah, I, you know, I'll, I'll be honest. I, I can see a lot of good and a lot of bad from it. I, I'm, I'm kind of mixed on it as well. I mean, mm-hmm. um, yeah, if you're being a responsible driver and... You know, I, I would I would not see an issue with it, but there are okay. And let's put it like this: there are a lot of people that give into temptation extremely easily. Right. That's I mean that's what they say is easy access to the driver. Right. But you know I'm not going to give a driver. Well, it's a different story. I don't drink, so yeah. it don't bother me. But just the idea that I know people, I got a lot of cousins, a lot of friends that drink in the yeah. car, but they're not driving. But yet and still they drinking in the car. Why should they be denied the privilege to drink while they're going down the road? You know, I, I, I would be very surprised mm-hmm. if this new law did not, in some shape or fashion, get amended. Um, and, it, and I'll kind of relate my topic is seatbelt laws. It, you know, it used to be that the driver would be responsible for everybody yeah, in the yeah, car. Everybody. Even the and, back seat. And that has now. actually changed now that the passenger can be without a seatbelt and they can be ticketed, not the actual driver. So it, it wouldn't surprise me if, if this does have some alterations in its course of life. Um, okay, and then as you said, and then if you get that ticket, they give them opportunity to do what? Run your name through. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, people can be, you know, might have a warrant out and just really just forget about it. You know, you told them went to court. Okay, you know they're gonna give you FTA as soon as you, as soon as they call your name, you're not in court. Well, Some people do get forget about it. Some people can't get off from work and all this stuff. And then you get stopped by somebody else that's not driving correctly, and you get stopped and pulled. The car gets stopped and pulled over, and they're gonna run everybody's name in that car. Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, that's it's, and don't be no like I said, don't have that open container. They're gonna run everybody's name, and somebody gonna come up with who's, who owns that yeah. container. You know, I. I I, I could look at this a few different ways. I really could, you, you know. Look if, at some different well, ways. Well, <laughs> you know, and, and a lot of times it is the fact that if you can keep someone alive, keep someone safe, there's always a benefit from it. You know, there's always the quality of life and the, the preciousness of life. But there are going to be those that maybe, as again, operators of a vehicle, they need to take responsibility for what's in their vehicle too. You know, there, there's a certain level of responsibility and accountability, but I can see where you're coming from. You know, because some people say it's not good to just pick up a friend off the street anymore because you don't know what they just got through doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you pick them up, they're going to give you. Mm-hmm. You know, you're in account of helping that person. I say, you can't pick up your friends? No, they say, you really, you really don't need to. Cause know your friends. And then something may happen to them. They might have got mad because they just killed their spouse. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? And then- you're contributing. <laughs> They'll arrest you for right, contributing. Right. You know, Birds of we, a feather flock together scenario. We got another comment. This okay. one from John Dow. He says also eliminates the conversation with the driver of no, that wasn't in the that drink in the back seat cup holder wasn't mine. It must have been there all day. And Mark Pillow has said as long as bars are legal, we signal that we accept a certain level of impaired driving, which is something that I so I totally it's, agree with. It's kind of a good point. So, yeah. so again, it's, it, it's a certain level of prevention, you know, and again, it's, it's responsibility of those that are driving. Now, again, it is, it, it, there could be some potential, you know, false accusations because what if I'm trying to be a DD? Yeah. You know, but again, as a DD, I need to make sure and take responsibility for everybody in my car. Yeah. And again, I think it just comes down to self-accountability you're going to check everybody in your car you know Again, people have their little in the moment <laughs> in the moment we would probably overlook they have their little fr- flags they have and you drink your little right. alcohol it, in and you know in going the moment you we gotta go to a pat down before you get Thank off in my truck right <laughs> no, I mean, again there there is there's a certain level of human error as you know again if i was picking up everybody at this table i probably wouldn't do that but again it'd be again ultimately my responsibility mm-hmm. Yeah, you're taking on a big, a big yeah. responsibility, a big risk, really, because you don't know. Yeah, and I actually have to give a shout out. That was my brother listening from South Carolina. So, hey, bro. Mm. Well, thank you for hey, joining. Bro. What's up, <laughs> What's up bro? <laughs> Anyways, uh, but 
you know, in order for them to know that there's an open container, they're going to have to pull you over for something else first and foremost, unless they see you drinking it. Well, so, no, but the driver can be, you know, acting in, incoherent while they're driving. Yeah, yeah and that gives it's, them a reason to pull right. you over. Mm -hmm. So, and that's something else they can be looking for. And, and maybe one other thing to point out is if you don't agree with it, there are representatives, there are people that represent you, you can go speak to about this. I mean, I mean but no, this is, was passed right. unanimously. I mean, what, one or two person didn't vote for it. I get it, but <laughs> so, you can still go talk to people that represent, and, and that's how things change in government. But the representatives, what voted it? I mean, one person voted against it. That's true. <laughs> now, we're about to go on break. You head fast, stay the course, and you have any thoughts or comments, make sure you leave it on our Facebook page or call us at 870-277-1080. We'll talk to you as soon as we get off break. You're listening to our thoughts on the matter on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. This is Leo with your KLEK Learn Spanish Minute. So let's say it's late at night and you want to go, um, and you want to eat something, but you want, don't want to cook, all right? So uh, usually you go to a restaurant, right? Restaurant is called restaurant. Restaurant. There you go. Restaurant is the place where, you, where they prepare food for you if you pay for it, right? Um, there's different types of restaurants. Uh, when I start thinking of different restaurants, uh, obviously I start with Italian. That's my favorite one. We call it Italiano. Italiano. Then we have the Mexican restaurants, Mexicano. Mexicano. There you go. The Hindu are Hindus. Hindus. Arab is Arabes. Arabes. There you go. Caribbean is Caribeño. Say that again. Caribeño. 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 There you go. I, I knew we would have a little bit of trouble with that one. Chinese is easy. That's Chino. Chino. There you go. Japanese is Japones. Japones. And Thai is Thailandes. Thailandes. Those last three ones, Chinese, Japanese, and Thai, are Asiáticos. 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 That means from Asia. From Asia. There you go. I am Leo, and this was your KLEK Learn Spanish Minute. Meineke of Jonesboro is now Starks Auto Service, a full-service auto repair and vehicle maintenance center, offering engine and transmission repair, brake service, tires, oil changes, and more, performed by ASE certified mechanics. The all-new Starks Auto Service, 2813 South Caraway Road in Jonesboro, 870-204-7112. Starks Auto Service, jonesboro.com. The Mu Omicron Lambda chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated was established on January 1, 1977. Originally serving Blytheville, Arkansas, and now serving Jonesboro, Blytheville, Osceola, Marion, and West Memphis, Arkansas. Today, the chapter continues to make an impact by focusing on Alpha's national community outreach initiatives such as My Brother's Keeper, A Voteless People is a Hopeless People, Go to High School, Go to College, Project Alpha, Boy Scouts, and the March of Dimes. The Mu Omicron Lambda chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated is committed to Alpha mission of developing leaders, promoting brotherhood and academic excellence, while providing service and advocacy to the community. More information about the Mu Omicron Lambda chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated is available at MOL Alphas on Facebook or via email at molalphas at gmail.com. Hello, I'm Officer Jonathan Hagens of the Jonesboro Police Department. One of the best decisions I ever made was to join the Jonesboro Police Department. Since joining, I've had the pleasure to give back, protect, and serve my community. Now I want to let you know about that same opportunity. The Jonesboro Police Department will conduct testing for the patrol officers at the Valley View High School. Applications are available online at jonesboropolice.com. The Jonesboro Police Department offers a competitive salary, health and retirement benefits, top of the line training, and most importantly, the chance to make a difference in the Jonesboro community. Join me in making Jonesboro a better place the Jonesboro Police Department is an equal opportunity employer, and women and minorities are especially encouraged to apply. More information, 870-935-5657. Applications are being accepted through September 7, 2017. Applications are available at 
jonesboropolice.com. Check out the Dorinda Clark Cole Radio Show every Sunday at 4 o'clock p.m. Listen as Dorinda plays the very best in contemporary gospel music and interviews all of your favorite gospel artists. The Dorinda Clark Cole Radio Show every Sunday at 4 p.m. on KLEK 102.5 FM. And now back to our thoughts on the matter on KLEK 102.5 FM. Thank you for tuning back in after our break. Um, We're going to continue our topic of open container laws. So we would really like to thought we would really like to know your thoughts on open container laws and the new laws that's just coming about. You know, texting and driving and all that good stuff. Our number is eight seven zero two seven seven one zero eight zero or you know, messages on our live feed on Facebook. Yeah, we uh, have a couple of more messages from our live feed. Uh, Mark Pillow and John Dow. John Dow, shout out to you guys because you guys are really getting into this. Uh, Mark Pillow said it could be fixed to limit privacy intrusion. Intrusion? Intrusion? Yeah. yeah, for passenger protection, couldn't it? And John Dow says it seems it would lose its teeth as a driver, could do a hold my beer during a stop. and. That is a good point. Yeah, I mean, I, I I can see that. Yeah, I mean, you probably have plenty of people currently that would be, you know, with this current open container laws and things like that not being in place, the driver could actually just pass things off to the passengers. Mm-hmm. So, again, there's, I guess, technical loopholes to where a driver could fly under the radar of technically breaking the law. It's not anymore, though. Exactly. <laughs> it's not it. Like I said, they voted what was some. Uh, one only one representative vote against mm-hmm. this law. So you talking about you can go to your representative and stuff like that. They're not going to kick. A, it's going to be hard to change this one because, and like I say, it gives them an open door to search and seizure. They give them an open open door for um, a warrants and arrest. It gives them an open door for so many different things just by passing this one little law. And actually, again, that brings up a good point is think about the open container law that is now in effect in conjunction with the raising of speed limits. Mm-hmm. And that's so you've got that open containers another, right. and faster speed limits. So you put two and two together. You've got a problem. Yeah, that is, that is a recipe See, they're for gonna disaster. See, they're going to let you go fast, but you can't drink. Oh, God yeah. forbid. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd rather go faster because I don't drink, but... The old said, do drink, please don't drive in my lane. So, so let's don't. think about it. So far on the conversation, we have uh, increased speed limits, no texting social media while driving, and no open containers. It sounds like somebody's trying to do things to protect us, in a way. In a way, yeah. they, I mean, it's, it's good, really it is, but it should have been an open forum before they just stamped it down on us and told us we can't do this and can't do that. They didn't have no discussion on. I mean, this was just these laws were just passed this week. We didn't even know that they was out there. Right. Not I'm like sure this. there are several people once again who thought that the open container law was already into effect. Uh, yeah. So you know, you think about that just it, seems like common sense. There, Don't there's do a that. certain level of prevention going on that I'm surprised actually we get negative feedback on because I can see it now. The headline is fatal car crash with beer open liquor open while texting and driving (laughs) kills four while going faster so you know i mean you really got to think about it no one really thinks that these might be good ideas until the worst possible thing happens yeah you know we, we we no one really wants to look at prevention we all look at damage control and maybe we now gotta get out of that mindset okay do you think more do you think going 75 miles an hour is is uh good Sure, why not? Everybody can't handle some people can't handle fifty five. But that's the and thing. If you don't give them opportunity to go seventy five. But you that's know the what? thing, it's a speed limit. Oh, it's a limit. It's a but, limit. But they think I can I can go it. Well, it's and that's true because most people are and going then, seventy five, let me kick it up to eighty five. Thank you. Right. I mean yeah, I mean that that's gonna happen. It is gonna happen. I wonder is that five miles gonna be is it gonna be applied now? I mean I think they just gave the opportunity to raise it. They haven't actually they announced said, where it is going to occur right. yet. Is they, it a when or where? Where? Um, oh, they are only on interstates. Controlled access highways, 75. It's rural road, 65. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah, we could always be like Texas and put it up to 80. Road. And come some on. of it 90. Oh. Yes, Wait, what? Is 90. Yeah, what? Yeah. On I-10, close to El Paso, it's 90. Okay. My drag will do every bit of it, so. Okay, <laughs> I can't there. drive through there. <laughs> like Brother Kyle was talking about, there are certain people who can only handle certain limits. I'm one of those people. I just got used to the fact that I can go like 65 going to my hometown, and I'm always looking down like, am I speeding? It feels like I'm speeding. I can't do that. 90 <laughs> is crazy. Yep. That's insanity. That was fun. Anyway, so. <laughs> I used to be a dragster. I'm sorry. So, you know, and, and really, if you think <laughs> about it, and, anyway, we'll and, and I love what Gans is, uh, you know, chiming in here. You know, if you don't like the things that are passing, please, please go out and talk to your representative, your congressman, your, I mean, your local resource. I understand what y'all saying. Be proactive, not react. Right. Talk to them now about laws that you would like to see and things that you don't want to see. I mean, I understand what you all saying, but if you look at the approval rate, I think speeding only had two votes against them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the uh, open container had one vote against them. So you start going talking to your representative, it's going to take a whole lot of yeah. people to change that. True. I mean, a whole but, lot. But that's, that's all, like 80, but that's all right, That's like 80-something 80 some, 80 some people voting for it and one person voting against it. 60-something mm -hmm. voted... Board, I think two voted against the uh, open uh, the speed law. Well, the good thing um, is though these are laws and not constitutional amendments. They can be changed very easily right. with the right amount of, of communication and voice from the people. Mm -hmm. They can. No, they're going to amend them. Well, we can open, we can do this here. They're not going. They're not going to change. I have not seen a law that was passed that really changed. They amended and put some more garbage in there, but it's, that main law still stands. Mm -hmm. True. And so, you know, you're going to change it, completely change it. I mean, don't cover it up with something else. Because, like I said, that open container just opened laws for a whole lot of other things. Ho open, well, not laws, but open up a whole lot of avenues mm -hmm. for a whole lot of other things. I, I guess let me pose this question, you know, about these topics is, do they have the ability to actually benefit the community more than anything yeah. is, is there really a negative side to it is it a benefit yes it'll benefit the community because of the money that they would get from you know stopping these people or, or just how about just public safety i mean it's a safety it's, it, it is safe i mean like i said i don't drink right so it don't bother me but if i'm riding with cousins and stuff in an rv and we all having a good time why we can't do that now, you know, two or three people in the car and everybody drinking, I, I don't drink, so I don't ride with them, no way. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying, that's my choice not to drink. Mm -hmm. But if a person wants to drink not driving the car, why? They cannot. And, and I, see I mean, that. I understand they say easy access to the driver. Everything is always easy access to the driver. But the driver is not the only wrong person in the car. I mean, right. he might be controlling the car. You can conversate wrong in a car and the driver get into the conversation, boom, what happened? What about women putting on mascara in early in the morning, sun beaming in the eyes, they're trying to put on mascara? Guilty. Thank you. <laughs> Sitting at a red light. Oh, that's true. I mean, that's, 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 that's a negligence. Lot. You know, that's negligence on you trying to put on mascara at 8 o'clock in the morning, everybody trying to get to work and all of that, you put on the, on the gas and boom. I, yeah, I guess at the end of the day, the way I, I mean, this is just my opinion. The way, end of the day, the way I look at it is if people can get home safely. No, seriously. If people can get home safely, no one is, is endangered. No one dies. No one gets hurt. There really, to me, there is no negative side of the open container law. And again, people will cry about it when someone does get hurt and they're like, well, that law was in place. I mean, I'm... On, I guess you can say on the fence, I'm teetling and toddling with it. Mm -hmm. I'm for it because I don't drink. But if I was a drinker, I'm trying to put myself but, in their shoes. If I was a drinker and that, not driving. Is that driving, the only thing about it, though, that you're against, though? The fact that you don't drink? Okay, then, like you said, you could have left it in my car. And you knew nothing about it? And I it. knew anything about it. You could have, oh, like you said, in the back, the guy saying the console in the back. Mm -hmm. Or I could let it down in the console in the door. Yeah. I'll be back in about 30 minutes. Come pick me up. And he leave it there. And then you get stopped somewhere else. Yeah. And you are in trouble. You're in trouble. I can see that. 
And I can understand the RV thing because as a kid we would travel all over and pack the whole entire family in the RV and you know grandpa would be driving mm. he wouldn't have no beer or nothing but uncles in the back drinking a beer one after another having a good old time talking about the good old days I understand that too but then again you also got to look on the other side of the fence easy access to the driver true that true and that. Uh, also you know I've been a victim of a drunk driver so me personally I do I think this law is gonna stop anybody no no it's not, <laughs> it's not. Because it'll, it may it, it may deter. It'll, it'll stop people from letting people. It might not stop the one that's drinking, but someone's not drinking and somebody else in their car. It might stop them from letting them drink in their car. Right. Yeah. If they people, know about it. A lot of people. You can't smoke in my car. No, you can't smoke in here. Mm -hmm. But see, they passed that law. With children's in the car, you cannot smoke. With children under five, what under five, under six? I think it's eighteen. I, I, I think it's like middle it teens, a, isn't it? I thought it was all children. I like, thought it was as long as you're under the, I thought if you were okay. under age eighteen, you couldn't smoke in the kid with the kids in the car. Yeah. See, you know, so. And I can understand that one too. Right. I mean, that's for the safety and benefit of the child. I mean, people are gonna break break this law. They will. No, it's just like it's just like you said, smoking in cars. It's <laughs> about like seat belts in cars. Sadly, it's about leaving animals in cars. You know, it. But the, the, again, the the really sad part about it is we have to have laws yeah, in place for common sense. It's like, and no offense to and anybody. That in our society is really sad. True. Seems like some of the common sense in the world has just went out the window, in my opinion. <laughs> right. It has. Well, I think it went out the window when a lot of technology came through the door. Mm -hmm. Common sense went out the window because everybody wants to get on the technology. They don't want to be left behind. They want to do it because, I mean, technology introduced a lot of things to weak-minded people. I mean, heck, we have warnings on toasters <laughs> to not use them in the bathtub. You know, I mean, uh, come on. I mean, that's... Hang on a second. There's a caution... Hot handle with care on my coffee cup. Right, all well, these morning, <laughs> that came these, from McDonald's. A person putting, you know. I know, I know, I, I remember <laughs> right. that. Right, but, but it comes but, down to we have rudimentary, very common sense rules and laws in place because bad things end up happening, and we have to have reminders of you should not do this basic common sense, honestly stupid thing. Yeah. So. Okay, that's one. Okay, this is not concerning Jonesboro. But have you all seen this texting where they trying to put this girl in jail for texting the guy he committed suicide? suicide? I can see that. But I, I can argue for her too because she didn't put she didn't she just was talking smack to him. She didn't liter literally do anything okay, physically I'm, to him. She but did mentally not, he did, but she did. But when she was getting they read her text mm -hmm. but didn't didn't read his text. And then when they found his text, then they started finding out on the end. It's like this here. I'm tired. You're going to do, you're going to do it anyway. Go on and do it. Go on and do it. Go ahead on and do it. Eventually, you want to do, if you're weak-minded, as you were saying, you're going to do what somebody tells you to do. But do you think if I text you, okay, text him. You know, okay, we're going to get off of her. If I text you to do we was talking about texting and driving. Mm. I'm texting you that you know so and so about to have a final you commit commit a crime. I didn't commit the crime. Uh -uh. But you do it. Are you at fault? Depends on how you interpret certain laws. <laughs> yeah. I mean it goes back to accountability. It goes back to self accountability. As a person, I think, you know, her talking to him in that matter, if you love somebody, you ain't gonna tell them that. I mean, I think that's a character flaw in But her see, part. if you would look at it earlier, it was saying, she was saying, you need help. Yeah. You need to go get help. Yeah. You need to do this. You need to. And he bypassed all that. But come on, do it then, boy. Come on and do it. You know? She should have just <laughs> called, called 911 and turned the phone off, if that's all she could say. Mm -hmm. I she mean, was a kid. She's a kid. She's young, dumb, and stupid, and we all been that way once. But... I've had family to, and friends commit suicide, and as a cat, I, 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 I totally agree that's a character flaw and something that she's going to have to live with for the rest of her life. But mm -hmm. as in self serve time, no, I do not. So, does either. anybody no. out there have comments to, you know, listening? You want to call in? Please feel free. Facebook Live, put your comments. We'd and like we'll, to hear from we'll, you. We'll, well Bila made Live an excellent address. point. The Facebook Live, and. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're Facebook Live. 
I don't know. Just I mean, K- KLEK pretty much if you go to uh, pretty much if you go to KLEK FM on our Facebook page, mm-hmm. you will be able to pull it up. Okay. Yep. The We're video live, will pop. It's We're live right streaming now. right now. And what is the phone number again if you'd like to call in? It is 870-277-1080. Thank you. I was spelling it out in the air. That's right. But uh, <laughs> Kabila, she makes, it out, she makes a very valid point. She said, at some point, we have to be adults and take personal responsibility for ourselves and our vehicle. Mm-hmm. And we just need to be more mindful of the company we keep. And that's 100% true. agree. I give you a hug, Kabila, if you were here for that. Because we do. We have to be responsible adults because that leads out into the community and really how we affect our community. Mm-hmm. We, we have to be adults. And it's and I'll say it again. It's sad that we have laws like this to tell us that we need to just have common sense. I mean, where did that go? My question is, where did the accountability go? Yeah. Me and Allie Jack was talking about that before we went on the air about it's, accountability and our children. You know, it's interesting. Yeah. We have we have a lot of discussion on here every week about laws in place to assist and benefit and give people things. But people get upset when we give them laws that say you can't do something. Mm-hmm. So it's either there, there's there's a really big lunch. disconnect of we're happy when the government wants to give us stuff, but we're unhappy when they say we can't do something. So and, and a lot of the times, it's weird to me because a lot of the things they say we can't do, it's stuff that you shouldn't be doing anyway. Exactly, it's it's coming like drinking like and why, driving. I mean, yeah, nobody like argues that. that? <laughs> no one argues that, but now we're also exactly. saying please don't have open containers in your car. They kind of go hand in hand, almost. Exactly. I mean, like I don't see how you can drink and drive unless there is an open container in the car. So I feel like by taking that out. Again, the temptation, the the accessibility. Yeah. I mean, we have we have laws about having guns in cars. You can't have ammunition next to the gun, and they have to not be easily accessible in unless other you words, have concealed carry. We have tons of things like this. In other words, with the guns, you pull a clip out of it and throw it in the very back seat, exactly. or leave it in the trunk. And and no one really argues that. So why are we? It's kind of like this. Think of. The open containers your ammunition you know i mean it's there i mean it's a really rudimentary way of explaining it but i mean seriously mm-hmm. and the the texting and driving thing i can remember being in high school i couldn't drive in high school and one of my best friends to this day i'm not gonna mention her name because she's gonna be mad at me but she would text and drive and I literally would just stare at her like, what are you doing? I, I think with both of these topics, I think every one of us in here has a personal connection of someone that's been affected by these topics. Yeah. And so I really, again, I can't see where the negative is coming from on these. Yeah. But I just, drinking and driving, oh my goodness. I know. I know. I know several people that do it. And I... I beg them. I'm, you can ask any one of my 262 truck drivers that I knew. And I still, to this day, will tell them before, if you have more than one beer and you get in that vehicle and have a wreck, that's on you. Mm-hmm. Because you do have somebody. I do not care what time it is. I've almost, actually, I've literally died because of a truck driver. I will come and get you. I swear to God. You know, there is no reason to be doing that, period, whatsoever. So actually, just a, a topic I just thought about in direct relation to this is we have some new options in town. We have Uber now, yes. and we have, of course, some cabs, and yeah. there's, there is the free shuttle bus from downtown to take people home. I'd almost guarantee you they won't allow you to drink in their vehicle while they are picking you up. Mm-mm. Yeah. And you're not even the driver, but they're the driver. So, you know, again, if you feel like you're going to drink and drive or you just don't want that accountability, please call some of these options. That would be great. My question is... They'll be listed on our Facebook page, so give us a day or two. We will have it on there. The places that you can call if you got to be in, what's it call it, in... Wait. When you, when if you, you feel like you're going to be tempted. Tempted <laughs> whatsoever. If you need a driver, look us up. Think Brother Cobb's going to put that on the website? Yes, sir. All right. Yes, All sir. Right. And it'll be on my Facebook as well. And I'm too. sure I'm sure Brad will share it too, and Allie Jack. Sure, sure, exactly. I'm happy the, to spread the, the word. Uber thing. Yeah, we have Uber now. That happened a week ago now. Yes, so I have yet do that. I know a couple I, of people. I know a few of the drivers personally, so I mean they're good people. So you gotta have a good car, no more than three years old, to drive Uber. 
Oh, okay. I can't <laughs> <Yep>. drive Uber. <laughs> I, sadly, I can't either. But I can't uh, either. there are some really good options out there now, and Jonesboro is growing. So, mm-hmm. yeah, please take advantage of them. They're, they are there. And Uber, you can get paid real good, real good. But mm-hmm. you have an up to date car. I consider doing that, you know, just to make some little side money. But I would most love of the people I know that do it, that's all they're doing it for. They have some free time during the day or right make after they get off bucks. work. Make twenty bucks. Why not? Right around town. Give me twenty. We're so, good. So there you go. If you don't feel like you can abide the wall, have somebody else drive for you. Yep. Yeah. That solves the problem. Just now, you know, leave your open container. Now the open container. My question is, what if somebody um, brings it in a different cup? You know Let's what I'm saying? That is a Good how question. do they know like, that? How would you a, know that it's in like if like somebody a, got a put big a Sonic root, cup or yeah, something? Root 44 you Sonic like, cup. You got a Yeti cup. That's coffee. Oh, yeah. What coffee? It's coffee. Are you sure it's <laughs> coffee, Brad? It is definitely coffee. <laughs> I don't think it is. Maybe there's something in there. <laughs> okay, well, we got a break coming up. I guess we're gonna have to investigate check Yeti cup. <laughs> yeah, man, feel free to take a sip. Uh, we will be back here in just a moment. That's um, right. And again, we kind of just open forum at the end. Feel free, call in, text, Eight, I don't know, seven, however you want to get zero, it out there. 277-1080 or to our leave a message on our Facebook page. On KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. season can happen all year round. Influenza, commonly known as the flu, is a respiratory infection caused by a virus. The flu is sometimes confused with a cold or 24-hour bug. Signs of the flu are high fever, sore muscles and throat, and being tired or sleepy. The flu is very contagious. Myths and side effects are a few factors that stop people from getting the flu shot. Side effects include sore shoulder, fever, cough, and sore throat. A common myth is that the vaccine will actually give you the flu. The vaccine cannot make you sick because it's made from inactive egg-grown viruses. Even if you've already had the flu, it's still recommended to get the flu shot. The sooner you get the vaccine, the better your chances of defeating the flu. I'm Dr. Eric Griggs. Get checked, get fit, get moving with Black Health Now. Black Health Now. Black Health Now was made possible by Life Strategies Counseling Incorporated. Counseling of all ages, dealing with depression, anxiety, child abuse, and more. Details at 1-866-972-1268. Online at lscihelp.com. Black Health Now is made possible by the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization dedicated to uncompromising commitment to communities. Service, leadership, empowerment. www.jones.com. Alumni, DST.org. Blues Live for Five, Part Two at Legends Barbecue Smokehouse. Only five dollars admission. Saturday, August 19th, seven o'clock p.m. Featuring from Dallas, Texas, Larome Powers. What's the name of that thing? Larome Powers. Performing all of his hits. Ain't nothing but a party. Jumping like a hole in the wall. LaRome Powers. Don't miss it. Blues live for five at Legends Barbecue Smokehouse. Saturday, August 19th, 7 o'clock p.m. Only $5 admission. This event is a KLEK fundraiser. The McDaniel Law Firm, 400 South Main Street in Jonesboro, is a firm believer in justice and equality for the minority community. The McDaniel Law Firm has fought for our rights for over 44 years. The McDaniel Law Firm offers legal help for wrongful death, as well as trucking and automobile accidents. Bobby and Brett McDaniel are available for a free consultation at 870-336-4747 or at www.mcdaniellawyers.com. From the KLEK Community Calendar, Bethesda Worship and Healing Center presents Community Back to School event, August 12, 2017, from 8 o'clock a.m. until 2 o'clock p.m. 
This event will take place at Parker Park in Jonesboro. There will be school supplies, food, haircuts, drinks, entertainment, and basketball games provided. There will also be members of the police department, local pastors, the fire department, and other members of the community present. There will also be a three-point shootout, a dunk contest, and more. More information on donating school supplies and about this event is available at Daddy's Choice Barbershop, 2301 East Johnson Avenue in Jonesboro, Bethesda Worship and Healing Center, 2215 North Church Street, or at 870-761-4480. The Kappa Nu Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated was chartered on June 29, 1975 in Jonesboro, Arkansas. AKA was founded on a mission comprised of five basic tenets, which are to cultivate and encourage high scholastic and ethical standards, promote unity and friendship amongst college women, study and help alleviate problems concerning girls and women in order to improve their social stature. Maintain a progressive interest in college life and be of service to all mankind. Through programs of educational enrichment, health promotion, family strengthening, environmental ownership, and global impact. More information about the Kappa Nu Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated is available at Kappa Nu Omega Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated on Facebook and K-N-O-M-E-G-A-1908.com. And now back to our thoughts on the matter on KLEK 102.5 FM. We're coming back to you from break. Now, it's um, okay. That's Laganza keep popping in. It is Laganzi. Or uh, Or Cabela. Um, thank you for turning into back into our show. Our thoughts on the matter on Kelly K one hundred two point five. Um, we're gonna try to finish up here in the last eight minutes we got. So, we actually have someone what's our else final that came. We have someone that came in at the very last yes, minute. Mr. Tim down there on the end. <laughs> T dubs. <laughs> T dub. T dub. Uh, <laughs> okay. Well. We've been talking about a lot of different things, and Ms. Helen Scott just wanted to point out that as long as the laws are in place to punish and protect everyone, and not just some of those or those who can't not afford an attorney, and I agree, these laws, as annoying as they are for some of you, and I know I can feel your frustration through the microphone, but it is really just to protect everybody, mm-hmm. plain and simply. It's for everybody's protection. It's for everybody's safety. I know you don't like the fact that you can't have an open container in the back seat of somebody's car when you're not even nowhere near the steering wheel. But at the end of the day, it is for the protection of you, everyone in that car, and anyone who might be outside around that car at that time. 100% agree. I agree with that, too. Is there I'm any sorry. other comments? What did you say? I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you serious? I was, I was reading and they really <laughs> hitting me. Why are they hitting me? What? Guess I gotta go back to drinking water then. <laughs> what have you done? Okay. They hitting me about overturning and all this here stuff and uh, laws that. But I just sorry. I got these are my folks. These K L E K folks. K L E K folks. That's all right. I got y'all. You know what? We are gonna take care of that later. <laughs> so what did you say though? I was pointing out that although it frustrates people who may be in the back seat of a car with their open container and nowhere near the steering wheel, that ultimately this these new laws are to protect them, the other people that are in the car, and everyone who may be outside around that car at that time. I don't know if you've ever been in a car with a well, drunk not person. It's not the outside people, it's just only the inside. No, I don't know if you've ever been in a car with a drunk person before. Oh, I grew up with them. <laughs> so you've been in a car with a drunk person. Yes. Have you ever been the driver of a group of drunk people? It make you want to add time up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can't, it's, it's like having five toddlers in the car at the it's same time. It's distracting. Exactly. It's very distracting. Yeah. It's really hard to deal with. So I can see why they don't want open containers because if you're sitting up there trying to stop your drunk friend from sticking their head through the sunroof of your car because they saw it in the movie and they just want to be like that limo scene they saw in that one movie or kind of reminds me of the movie Hangover yeah 
I was thinking about 21 Jump Street, but or they have one friend who's trying to moon somebody out the window because they think that'd be so hilarious because they're super drunk. Basically, you need to be able to know what's going on inside of your car. They wait Having that man. many people distracted and on different wavelengths of distraction can distract the driver, which can ultimately cause a crash. So I. Exactly. If you moon Overall, somebody, you way over the limit. You ain't had no business drinking no way. If you mooning folks out the window and <laughs> sticking your head to the sun, with talking about like you in Vegas or something. You ain't, I don't know what. Yeah, like you in Vegas. They, they act like they. Mm -mm. Like you're in Vegas. They need to be like they're at home. That's where they need to be at. <laughs> yeah. Drinking like that. <laughs> you can obviously see we, we have a we have a, a very biased opinion on this, and I think overall we're biased. Well, I mean, we're all kind of leaning in a certain direction. What direction Sorry. is that? That we think it's well, to help for public safety. Except well, that's not cops. bias. That is. No, it's not. That's well. All anyway, opinion. the way I was going with this is: was we there anybody out there that would like to chime way. in? <laughs> is there anybody out there would like to chime in? The public would y'all like to call in, talk about it, anything like that before we wrap up the show? It is your last chance to dance once again. Give us a call: eight seven zero two seven seven one zero eight zero. We would love to hear what your opinion is, and also I'm gonna go ahead and go back to our live stream. No. It's not about you this time. <laughs> John, John John Dow protects the safety of responders to a drunken wreck and those property Im involved too. And that's true. Yeah, so I mean, if an accident does occur, you have responders that actually have to come take care of the scene. So it's just one more level of uh, taking care of the public. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, we all agree with all this here. Yeah. We're just... Kind don't text and drive. Don't text and drive. Don't text and I agree drive. with that too. Don't, don't, you know, have an open container. Don't be drinking and driving. Let's use some common sense and accountability. Or the BT Groove. Drive for yourself and for others. others. And if there's a topic you guys want to talk about or want <laughs> us to talk about next week, please uh, message Kaylee K. Let them know. I am. We'll be happy to discuss your topic on next week's show. That's right. And. Yeah. Go ahead, Miss Allie. Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I was just going to say there are a couple of things that we thought about talking about today, but we don't know, so we just... We, we feel like they could be big topics. Yeah. So yes, we next focus on. It's going to be very and, com uh, controversial. Yes, please. Don't worry. I'll be there for that one. Yes, ma'am. I got some stuff sure. to say on that, too. What are you talking about? <laughs> yes, yeah. oh, you know. Yeah, take out the advice. Don't move folks out the window. Don't, yeah, that's don't, right. Don't, don't stick your head through no sunroof, and, uh, <laughs> like you're on the Titanic or something like that. Don't text and drive all that. that you I, are not I, the king of the world. Cause yeah, you're not. You're not. <laughs> that's no. right. And uh, okay, and everybody that's listening, please remember to listen tomorrow from seven to three to Victory Praise Gospel with Brother Picasso and Minister Patrick Bean. And I have a Facebook page too, Brother Picasso Victory Praise. Go on there and like that page. I'm but in, I'm in competition with Miss Ali Hook. But before you like his page, <laughs> make sure that you like Ali J's page. No. And a Amanda no. Moffat Dunavant page. No. And the T Dove Show page. No. Brad, between me and Kyle. I do not have a page. <laughs> <laughs> Just like yeah. Brad. Thank you for you have a good weekend. Have a blessed on one. K102.5 FM, a program offering opinions from all sides of the issues concerning local, state, and national topics of importance to the Jonesboro community. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council.